y'all, it's Angela Walters from Quilting is My Therapy, and I am filming from my studios in Denver. Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm actually at the hotel in Denver. I'm here filming a new craftsy class and some new episodes of the Midnight Quilt Show, so stay tuned for those. But I thought I would take advantage of my lovely new accommodations, as well as the mountain air, and put together a fun video tutorial for you. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to quilt the flower meander. This design is perfect. It's not only easy to quilt, it has beautiful texture to your quilts. I'm going to show you how to quilt it, as well as some variations, and give you some troubleshooting tips just in case you make a mistake. Not that I think you're going to make a mistake, I just know what I've done. So let's get right to it. This design starts with a nice small swirl, like this. Now once you get to the center, you're going to start working your way back out by quilting small little petal shape arcs. And I'm going to quilt them around the outside of the swirl until I run out of room. The petals don't have to touch the swirl. I'm just worried about trying to keep them the same size. Now that the first row is done, I'm just going to hop right back out and start quilting my next row of petals around the outside of that flower. Here's the thing though, they don't have to touch the previously quilted row. Instead, I'm trying to keep them all the same size no matter which row they're in. And just like I did with the second row, as soon as I run out of room, I'm going to hop right back up and quilt another row of those arcs. Again, I'm not trying to make them touch the row before. I'm just quilting them the same size until I get to the end of my row. That is one beautiful flower, if I do say so myself. I can echo my flower as many times as I want, but once I'm ready to start a new one, I'm going to quilt a partial row, stopping wherever it is I want to quilt another one, and go right into my swirl, making it nice and round, then adding my arcs around the outside of it, again stopping when I run out of room, hopping back up, and doing the next row. Probably the hardest thing about quilting this design is you're going to get weird little gaps in between your flowers. If that happens, you can quilt just more petals or arcs to fill in any of those weird shapes. I think people will notice a gap in the quilting before they notice an error, so as long as you fill it in, it's going to look fine. Then, as you can see, I'm going right into my next row of petals, quilting them so that they're the same size as the row before. Now, I'm going to echo my way right on out around a previously quilted flower to get to a different area. Being able to echo around other flowers really helps you maneuver your way around an area so that you can start your next flower wherever it is that you want. This is really important when you're quilting on a quilt and you need to end up in a certain place. Now I've quilted my next little swirl and it quilted rows of my petals around it. Notice I'm trying really hard to keep them somewhat consistent. They're not necessarily touching the row before. I know I'm saying this a lot, but it's almost like I know what problems most quilters have with this design. And looky there, another gap in between my flowers. Well, we know how to fix this. We're just going to add more of those arcs, more of those petals, and fill it in. If they're all the same size, it'll have a nice same overall texture. And see how nice and filled in that is? There's no big gaps, nothing that would be noticeable. All right, so I'm going on to my next flower, I'm quilting it a partial row, and then going into my swirl and then moving right into the petals. Now here's the thing about quilting this design. It's not the number of rows that you add to the flower that makes it bigger or smaller. In fact, once you're done with this design, you won't see the individual flowers at all. What changes the density of the design is the size of the petals. If you want less dense quilting, just make your petals a little bit larger. Now let's do a common troubleshooting thing. When you're quilting this design, you want to make the swirl nice and round. What you don't necessarily want is something long like this. Not that there's anything wrong with it. The problem is, once I start adding my petals, working my way back around, you're going to see it leaves me with a weird kind of shape. Unlike a nice round swirl, this shape leaves me with a lot of gaps in between the rows. Now, if this happens, it's not the end of the world. I'm definitely not going to rip it out. I'm just going to keep adding my petals, filling it in, filling it in, and filling it in until that whole area is done. Remember, just like I said earlier, people will notice a hole in the quilting before they notice an error. So as long as this whole thing is nice and filled in, it's going to look fine. You can't judge your quilting by one design alone. You have to fill in the whole area to get an idea of the overall texture. Now, as you can see, I still have a little bit of a gap, so I'm going to add more petals and just work my way into filling it in. The moral of this quilting story, if you make a mistake, just keep filling around it until you can't see it anymore. Don't you wish other things in life worked that way?
Okay, this design is amazing by itself, but there are so many fun variations that you can quilt. One common thing that quilters struggle with is getting that nice sharp point on the arcs. Well, what you can do is replace it with a more loopy kind of shape. It's gonna look slightly different, but it's gonna be a little bit easier to quilt. Using that momentum, I'm just gonna go right into the loop. Again, I'm not trying to make the loop touch the previously quilted line. I am still just focusing on keeping those arcs the same size. And here you can see the slight different look that it gets. Now when I run out of room, I'm still gonna just jump right up and go into my next row of loopy arcs. Now, as I'm quilting them, I'm not worrying about the row before, of course, and I am trying to keep them the same size, making sure everything is filled in as much as possible. And I still progress onto the next flower like I did the previous one. Now, if you've tried quilting the regular flower meander and you're started looking like this, then you could just say you're more of an advanced quilter because you've moved on right to the variations. Variation is also great for busier fabrics since it's quicker to quilt, and that way you're not spending more time than necessary on a design that you can't even see. And what a fun variation of the flower design. But what do you do if you're having trouble with the arcs and the points? Simple, just replace the whole thing with a nice wavy line. I love wavy line designs because they're easy to quilt. If you don't think you can quilt a wavy line, just try quilting a straight one. Chances are it'll turn out wavy. For this variation, all I'm doing is quilting a wavy line that kind of works its way around the outside of the swirl. Now I'm still trying to keep the spacing consistent, and when I'm ready to quilt my next one, I'm just going to quilt a partial row and then go right into my swirl, making it nice and round just like I would a regular flower, but then going into my wavy line. This is great for maybe novelty quilts or children's quilts, or when you just want a little bit of an organic look. Okay, to be honest, I just use the word organic when I want to sound artistic. But whatever you call it, it's a great, fast design and lets you get the hang of quilting the flower meander without worrying about your arcs and your points. If, if you want a more elegant variation of this flower, all you have to do is add echoing. What I'm going to do is still quilt my first row of petals like I normally would, but I'm going to make my arcs a little bit larger. Then, before I add my next row, I'm going to echo my way back now I wanna make sure there's enough difference between the spacing of the echo and the petals themselves. This is what will help the echoing stand out. Now as I go to add my next row of petals, I'm just gonna work my way around and then when I run out of room, I'm gonna work right back into an echo. So if my petals are a half inch big, then I might make my echoing about a quarter of an inch apart. I just want there to be enough difference that it looks intentional. And as you can see, what becomes more noticeable isn't necessarily the overall texture, but that little bit of unquilted area that pops out in between the echoing. Now it's gonna take a little bit longer, of course, so make sure you really love the person you're doing this for, but the result is oh so worth the effort. Now I might do this in a particular area of the quilt that I wanna draw attention to, or an area that you can actually see the quilting. Since this takes longer, I'm probably not gonna do this in a busier fabric, unless I'm practicing. And everything about this design goes together the same way. I'm gonna quilt my row, echo, and then quilt my next row. My absolute favorite thing about quilting is that you can take one design and come up with so many different variations of it, depending on what you want to quilt, what you know how to quilt, or what you have time to quilt. And this flower meander is no different. So what do you think? Do you love it as much as I do? It's such a great design, right? Well, hopefully you'll use this on the quilts that you have laying around. Be sure to let me know if you have any questions. All you have to do is leave a comment below. I read those and answer them periodically. Also, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel right there so you don't miss out on any future episodes. And I'll see you in the next quilting therapy tutorial.